What you guys got another video here for you on antivirus software and whether you should use free or whether you should use pay and which uh, things you should consider if you are thinking about buying an antivirus software. This is what we're going to be talking about today in today's video. So first off, there is tons of different antivirus software out there available. You have things like Bitdefender, you have Kaspersky, you also have ones like Avast. And we also have ESET, Avara, and we also have Norton, and we also have McAfee, to name a few. There's probably a few more out there that you can use as well. So which one should you choose? Or should you just use Windows Security, i.e. Windows Defender, on your PC? And is it good enough? And that's what we're also going to be talking about as well. So first off, let's talk about Windows Defender, because that is pre-installed in all Windows operating systems. So is that a viable option for me or for you? Well, for me, it's not. I just don't think it's up to snuff, and I just don't think it's good enough uh, for what my needs are. It doesn't have any sort of email scanning facility on here. So that's one of them here. It does have you know real-time scanning and things like that. It's not really great at protecting you with uh, ransomware, and another one that I do like to have is a firewall, and it does have a Windows firewall, but it's not that great if I'm completely honest. And in my honest opinion about detection rates, I just don't think it's that great in my personal opinion. Now, it is free, and it does come pre-installed on your system. But as you can see here, these are your options available to you. Now, it's not bad for a free antivirus if you don't want to spend any money and you don't want to install anything. A lot of people complain about the system resources and things like that that it uses. On a modern day system, you probably don't even know it's actually on the system running. But again, it is there and it is free and you can use it if you wish. But I will choose to use another antivirus. So another thing to consider if you are looking to use a antivirus software, whether you want to pay for an antivirus software or whether you want to use a free version. There's plenty of free versions out there. You've got Avast that run a free version for you. They also have ones like Bitdefender, which also has a free version. These are cloud-based scanning uh, software. That's another option available, whether you want a cloud-based uh, antivirus so it does all of its scanning in the cloud, which doesn't take a lot of system resources and it does protect you, but you can choose whether you want cloud-based antivirus or whether you just want something that you install on your system and it's running in the background on your computer. So there is some free options like Kaspersky as well. They do have a free option available. If you don't want to spend any money, they are options that I would consider. Kaspersky and Bitdefender is probably my two choices of free antivirus programs. Okay, so let's talk about the free option here. Kaspersky and Bitdefender is probably one of the two ones that I would go for if you want in a free antivirus program. Again, depending on whether you want cloud-based scanning or a cloud-based antivirus, that's another option that you'd have to look at. Um, but really, it just comes down to features and what features you need. So, for instance, if you need email protection and firewall, then unfortunately, the free options don't come with any of these. These are paid premium options. So you can compare plans as well and look at those, and it will tell you basically what you get for free and what you would have to buy if you want to get those extra uh, features. OK, another thing to look into is the actual uh, operating system that you're running. So depending on what operating system you're running, whether you're running uh, Windows, or whether you're running Android or iOS or Linux, you would then have to choose which antivirus supports uh, that particular operating system. And of course, it just depends on uh, what operating system you're using, uh, on what actual antivirus you can use. Obviously, you're not going to be able to use Windows Defender on a Linux based system because it is for Windows. And again, there might be uh, antivirus software out there that you can't use on Linux at all. So you need to check all that out. And some people might say that you don't need an antivirus program on Linux, and that's completely fine. Uh, it isn't uh, as popular as Windows. That means it is not being as tacked as much as Windows. But again, 
it's entirely your choice. If you get hit with ransomware, which there is ransomware for Linux, it can actually still encrypt all your data. So it's always advisable to uh, look into those things if you're on that sort of particular operating system. So when you look at the compared list here, you can see the free option doesn't give you uh, much in sort of features, but it does give you, uh, you know, a ransomware protection, which is very good, and also anti-malware protection as well. Obviously, for a little bit of extra cash, you're getting a few extra uh, features, like, for instance, safe web browsing. So when you're browsing the web and you're downloading files and things like that, that protection right there is essential for people that are vulnerable to getting infected. If you're more clued up and a bit more careful, you might not need that as much, but it's always nice to have that there to protect you. Again, you've also see here anti-phishing and also two-way firewall and a bunch of other things on here which might be more usable for you if you want that particular type of antivirus and feature. So check out some of the uh, comparison sites for what features you get and what you don't get if you're looking for extra features. Again, you can also get the VPN service here. You can see VPN is also integrated into the antivirus program and a bunch of other features like password manager and things like that. If that's what you're looking for, then obviously you would need to go a little bit further up the food chain and pay a little bit more money for those extra features. And depending on what particular antivirus you're looking at will give you certain types of features that you may need or some that you don't need. For instance, there's no point overpaying for something that you're not going to use. For instance, if you're not going to use the VPN service, then there's not much point in paying a lot more money for it. Dark web monitoring, if you're not going to be doing any of that stuff, then by all means, it's a feature that you're not going to use. And you can see here, there's some other stuff here like cloud backup and things like that. If you're not going to use these features, then don't pay for all of these uh, extra add-ons. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to cost you extra money. Now, I've been using ESET for quite some time and uh, quite impressed with it. It uh, doesn't have all the other bloat installed uh, with the actual software. It just gives me all of the stuff that I actually need. And again, the reason why I use it, it does have a pretty good email scanning software on here. So when I'm uh, receiving emails from people, it's automatically scanning those and fishing those out and basically protecting my system. And because I use the email system quite a bit on my computer, it's important for me to make sure that I'm not going to be clicking on anything because I do get loads and loads of spam email every day with malware attached to them and all sorts of stuff trying to get me to click on things and this sort of deals with a lot of that stuff very very quickly and you'll see if you open up outlook here it's embedded up the top here and it works pretty well uh, giving me trusted addresses spam addresses and also spam i can mark them and i won't receive any more from that person so it's quite useful for me to filter out a lot of this stuff and it comes in with the package that I've got. So I do like ESET for that particular type of feature. Now mobile support is another thing. If you need something for your mobile, then check out which antivirus gives you mobile support as well. So you get all your usual stuff like password manager, network inspector, secure data, anti-theft and uh, banking and payment protection here. And that's pretty good. You also get loads of other stuff on here as well. Some of this stuff I don't use, but mainly the stuff I use is it's got a very lightweight scanner on here. It doesn't really take a lot of system resources when you're running a scan on your system. So if you do want to run a computer scan, you can see here, uh, once I start this off, I can show you Task Manager. And this is doing a full scan on the system, as you can see here. And uh, you can see there's a uh, 16% and 15% usage here. So not too bad. It's not uh, using a lot of system resources when it's running on the system. And if I click on this here, you'll see we've got this one here that's running at 13%, which is to do with ESET. And also we have another uh, service, which is the ESET service, which comes on and off, but it's nothing too crazy really uh, and it's scanning my whole system and you can see here it's dropped right down to seven percent now six percent and it's not too bad uh, while it's running a scan on the system and you can see it's running a scan right here 
and uh, it's not using up a lot of system resources. It does go up and down a little bit, but on a system like this, it won't bother it whatsoever. You can see here we do have parent control and a bunch of other stuff on here like anti-phishing protection and also web access protection and a bunch of other stuff on here as well. So depending on what you're looking for, uh, this will have you covered. There's loads of other stuff inside here. It's packed with features. Again, also, if you're looking for something that uh, has game mode on here, this does have game mode where you can turn this on and you won't be pestered while you're playing games with uh, pop-ups and scans and things like that. It doesn't do any of that stuff. It allows you to turn off customer experience and all that sort of stuff. If you don't want to get involved in any of that, you can just toggle that off. And as you can see, we do have a gamer mode here, which basically pours performance optimization for games and presentations. And you have a bunch of other security settings here as well. Now, just for those people that actually say that you don't need an antivirus in 2023, I'm pretty sure that they don't know what they're talking about because you do need an antivirus program in 2023. Whether you just use built-in Windows Defender, uh, that is better than nothing. Uh, but you should be having some sort of protection on your PC if you're running a Windows-based system uh, because malware threats and ransomware threats are real and it's quite easy to click on the wrong thing by accident. If you have no protection, it's just going to come on in and uh, you know use its payload and basically uh, do what damage it needs to do. And you won't have any sort of former protection from that uh, if you don't have any sort of antivirus program on the system even Windows Defender. So it's always best to have something on the system. And if it's all about FPS and trying to get that few extra FPS by disabling all this stuff, then obviously you need to get out of there and get a life really, because obviously just to gain an extra five FPS to, over your system security is just stupidity. So in my personal experience, if you are looking for an antivirus program, I tend to not go for the ones that have all the bloat in them, like you know system cleaners and other types of stuff that I'm not going to use. I just try to get one that's lightweight and it protects my computer, and that's about it. I don't use Windows Defender. Uh, I try not to use that at all. Uh, periodic scanning you can set up if you've got, say, ESET installed. As you can see here, I'll quickly show you when I open this up. You'll see here, if I go down to this one here, you'll see ESET security is turned on. That automatically turns off uh, the actual Windows Defender. So you have no need to uninstall it or use a script to rip it out or any of that stuff. And I have shown you videos on that because people want to see how to do it. Uh, but basically, you don't need to do that. You just install your antivirus program and it will disable uh, Windows. Uh, Defender on your system. Now down here, there is a little drop down and you can see here, we do have period, periodic uh, scanning and that's turned off at the moment. But if I wanted that to scan as well, occasionally I can do, I can turn this on and it will all be a, like a second line of defense if you wanted to do that. Um, if you're one of those people that download lots of dodgy stuff, then maybe do this. You don't need any more than one antivirus program on your system. You can have a secondary scanner software like Hitman Pro or something like that or Malwarebytes Free and run that on your computer every so often if you feel the need to. But you don't need antivirus, another antivirus program like Malwarebytes uh, professional version, which will be obviously then an, an antivirus program in itself. So that would also disable uh, the Windows Defender. So you only need to run one uh, program at any one time. So to finish off, it doesn't really matter which one you choose, in my honest opinion, uh, because they're all very, very good. And uh, depending on what one you choose, uh, it obviously an antivirus is only as good as your common sense. If you start clicking on stuff that might be, uh, for instance, zero-day malware or something like that, and you click on it, or it's not in the uh, antivirus definition database, and you go clicking on it, it may run and may... Uh, use its payload on the system, and that will be it. It will be running on your computer. And that's how malware seems to slip through antivirus software. It's not that yeah, it's going to protect you 100%. You still have to use a bit of common sense. And uh, you can choose whatever antivirus program you like, uh, as long as you're getting one that's one of the top branded ones. And uh, basically, you should be okay. If you use a bit of common sense alongside that, uh, then you're not going to get infected or be hit 
with ransomware. I try to get ones that have got pretty good ransomware protection because we all do it. We all click on stuff by accident sometimes. And, uh, you know, it takes a second to click on something and uh, infect your PC. And, uh, of course, if it's ransomware, that's it. It's going to encrypt all your data. And there might not be a decryption tool for you to decrypt it. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.